story is about my girl Jamila Jamil or oh, Jamila Jamil. Is that how you pronounce her name? Um, I've seen a lot of her online. Uh, mostly, I'm 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 sure people are familiar with her because she's a Channel Four presenter, but I'm not because I don't have a TV because I'm a hipster. Um, uh, <laughs> but I'm familiar with her because I always see kind of like little um, uh, what you, how, what do you call it activism type videos about her concerning different social issues right she's kind of like one of those people that is always kind of on the forefront in terms of speaking out about certain things and kind of you know standing up for people quote unquote but i'm starting to get a bit annoyed by her because she seems to be a bit of a broken record when it comes to the kim kardashians of these worlds right she seems to have a bit of a bee in a bonnet around young girls being um influenced wrongly by people like kim kardashian and the, the idea and the kind of idea that they place on beauty and all this sort of malarkey right even though some people could say would some people say it's a bit patron ironic or there's double standards there because she's a fairly attractive young lady herself jamila jamil right and she's been given I, i'm sure the channel for job or other magazine covers or editorial work because she is a fairly attractive um asian lady right um or a very attractive asian lady she's got a real natural beauty she's got match she's got really thick uh flowing hair um so she looks really amazing on camera so there's a lot to talk kind of her career is kind of but then maybe that's part of a part of an issue maybe the fact that she's seen how um um, how superficial that world is and the fact that no one cares about her intellect in that world, that they only want to promote her beauty, that she wants to take a stance in terms of speak up for the people that don't have the chance to in order to be put in a magazine because they're beautiful. That could be part of it. So there could be some sort of, there could be a noble act in there, but I don't know. There's something that kind of seems a bit off about it. There's something a bit, a little bit uh, self-aggrandizing, a little bit virtue signally about it, a little bit um, self-involved. I'm not sure the motivation is because, again, I'll play the video, but there's a video of her kind of talking about the fact that she thinks, um, if you're listening on a, a audio, on a podcast, you'll hear the audio, but she kind of basically thinks that um, the Kim Kardashians of this world and all that kind of group, they're, they're kind of secret agents of the patriarchy, right? The patriarchy is the idea, you know, that men should go out and earn money and women should stay in the home so that these women are kind of inadvertently wait, working um, to kind of reinforce the idea of patriarchy because they're so they're so obsessed with their way they look um and this is also driving girls to be obsessed with the way they look which in turn drives them to kind of like seek their value only in their looks and to have men held up in a pedestal blah de, blah blah but i'll play the video anyway for you guys and you guys can kind of judge it and we can kind of expand on the topics a little bit here we go let me get it up on here it's on twitter i think it's on the full interviews on channel four but i'll play a little bit of it now hopefully it shows up on the screen Let's see. There we go. Woman who perhaps unknowingly is still. Let's play it from the beginning and then put a speaker here. The go. double agent of the patriarchy is basically just a woman who perhaps unknowingly is still putting the patriarchal narrative out into the world, is still benefiting off, profiting off, and selling a patriarchal narrative to other women. But it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. You know, just because you look like a woman, we trust you and we think you're on our side. But you are selling us something that is that really doesn't make us feel good. You're selling us a, an ideal, a, a body shape, a, 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 you know, a, a problem with our wrinkles, a problem with aging, a problem with gravity, a problem with any kind of body fat. You're selling us self-consciousness. The, the same poison that made you clearly develop some sort of body dysmorphia or facial dysmorphia, you are now pouring back into the world. You're like recycling hatred. And I find that really dangerous and I think it's unacceptable and I don't care if you're a woman. I think constructive criticism is needed for us, for anyone to ever evolve. For our gender to evolve, we need some sort of constructive uh, criticism, as long as we do it in a somewhat careful way. But money is a great um, magnet, isn't it? I mean, you mm -hmm. said yourself, you got you started doing T4 because somebody said, yeah. here's a lot of money. Absolutely, but so I wasn't hurting anyone happens. by saying, here's Hollyoaks. No, but what I mean is you, yeah. you can presumably see how any person can be seduced into going along with something that if they stopped and thought about it, they'd go, well... Of course I do, but so many of the worst things in the world have happened motivated by greed. And I just don't think that's an acceptable excuse anymore. How much, how much money do you need? Really, how much money do you need? How much money do, does, do any of these like, huge influencers who are worth millions or billions sometimes, how much more, why are they still promoting appetite suppressant lollipops to young girls? And it's not a fight against obesity. They have young, already slim girls in their adverts for Flat Tummy Company, 
flat tummy co whatever they're called now this company that are absolutely everywhere and they're even being advertised in some of the most mainstream magazines women's magazines and they have a billboard in times square the money is built on the blood and tears of young women who believe in them who follow them who look up to them like the big sister they never had it's just it's so upsetting it feels like such a betrayal against women and i will not be a part of it i and i will not stop calling it out when i see it oh now i don't know about you guys but i think that's a bit out of order right um First of all, saying that people who care about their appearance or care about their looks are suffering from some sort of body or facial dysmorphia is way out of order, right? Also, this idea that um, there shouldn't be... It's weird because who are you to... And also, the, the kind of last statement about, you know, how much money do they need? In a free market society, who are you to judge how much money anyone makes, right? People should be allowed to make... People should be allowed to be as greedy, right, as fucking anyone they want to be, right? They should be allowed to hoard as much coin as they want. They should be able to be as philopentratic or philopentratic, whatever, whatever it's called. They should be allowed to give away as much as they want as well. But I don't think it's with it's anyone's. Uh, I don't think it's anyone's business, anyone's right to tell you or to tell me how much money we should or should not be earning. That's a very dangerous and slippery slope to get down. I know sometimes with people of wealth or with people that have a lot of resources, right? It can be annoying to see them hoard everything, right? Because um, it's just annoying to see it, right? But the law of nature says that the, what you call it? Um, How does it go? It says for, for the 10% of employees that you have, 1% will be doing most of the work, right? For a, That's the kind of the way it goes, right? So if you're a high performer and you're able to produce jobs for the majority of people then it's only natural or you're able to produce most of the entertainment most of the services for most people it's only normal for you to also hoard most of the things or to have most of the items because you know you're you're able to supply most people with most things it's kind of this kind of con it's, it's kind of where i'm a bit conflicted with the whole jeff bezos criticism right for as much for as evil as they may be for how the working conditions are in amazon there is a uh, there has to be an understanding that for for you for your items to be delivered next day or to be delivered within a twenty four hour period, there has to be somebody working on the other end who is absolutely sweating their asses off, right? Who is probably working in some sort of unsafe conditions, who maybe isn't getting paid what they should be getting paid. It, there, there has to be some sort of give somewhere or the other. And for the fact that J Jeff Bezos is able to allow you to buy headphones in a minute's notice, maybe he should have all the money in the world. I don't know if, if that's right or wrong, but the fact that he's able to employ so many people, the fact that he's able to service so many people in the world, if you're able to touch so many people in the world, shouldn't you be getting some shouldn't you be getting um rewarded in some way shape or form that's the same argument people have for nurses or teachers right um that industry is a bit fucked up because they don't pay them well enough but the reason why people get annoyed when they hear about a nurse or a teacher getting paid really low right getting paid like 30 out 30 grand a year and they're working i don't know 100 hours a week it's because they know that that person's work is being is it's they're touching so many people every single day right healing mending being a support system to so different many, many families that they should be compensated like you know it should be a like for like comparison so with the Jamila Jamel thing I think there is for as much as she goes on about Kim Kardashian being a secret agent of the patriarchy there is a little bit there is some it, she's a little bit disingenuous I think sometimes with people like this and I and I don't blame her for it I think there is a little bit of envy and a little bit of jealousy when it comes to speaking about people like Kim Kardashian or people of those kind of ilk because when you work in the entertainment industry, I'm sure she's heard stories about Kim K or that kind of Kardashian clan, or she's been in rooms with those kind of people, and she's heard how they are as people, right? She might have heard they're rude, she might have heard they're dumb, da, 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 whatever area it may be. She's heard, um, um, what you call it? She's heard first-hand accounts of people that have been in and around their space, and also when you get around them. The, the the first thing you notice, especially with people that are really high performers or people that are super well known, is that when you get around them, for the you know there might be a small minority of people who kind of uh, um, exude that kind of rock star or star persona, but for the most part, they come across as fairly normal people, right? And sometimes, if the person doesn't have an extrinsic talent that you can kind of um, grasp or understand, right, or you can kind of put a label on it, it kind of does make you feel a bit bummed out, right? That they're able to command such influence command such um have so much power within the culture or um generate so much money but they seem so ordinary they seem so quote-unquote basics quote-unquote boring right 
it can sometimes feel you can sometimes without even wanting to you can sometimes feel a bit envious of these people right and because i know and i know this has been i know this is true because i've spoken to a few people about it so i think i spoke to some people at work actually the other day about it and they were and this girl was kind of mentioning the fact that she can't help but feel jealous or feel envious about these kids that are able to command a high um consultancy fee when they just come in and look at fabric swatches for half an hour right because she she's been in the same room as them she knows that their opinions aren't as any more valid than hers right um but they somehow managed to craft a lane for themselves where they are an influencer a micro influencer a brand ambassador that's been able to and they've been able to kind of steer the ship branding wise of certain brands and it can sometimes make you feel a little bit you know oh, man this girl's 16 and she's being paid twenty five thousand consultancy fee, right? Um, and you're kind of seeing the same sort of sea change happening in the football journalism. Again, it's a weird connection I'm making, right? But stick with me. In the football journalism world and punditry world, there's a bit of a reaction within the football journalism world, for the most part, against fan channels, right? Because you know, fan channels for the most for the most part, especially the ones that I detest, are really like sh you know when you see their thumbnails, it's always like you know, like fucking really shouty idiots right who kind of like you know that just really shouty you know the kind of like wwe fans oh my god he didn't say that did you see that you know that kind of like really boisterous bombastic unnecessary like shouting unnecessary like um unnecessary uh peacocking of teams that aren't, aren't nothing to do with you like weird just weird just weirdos you know that kind of like freaky kid in class that was super enthusiastic about david beckham like he's just a bit weird a bit creepy right but you're seeing a reaction against those fan channels because for the most part, journalists don't want to admit that, put aside those freaks, right? There are genuine uh, football enthusiasts who speak well and who kind of have a good understanding of football and can kind of articulate their thoughts, even though they might have rose-colored tinted glasses on, uh, blue tinted glasses on, whatever tinted glasses on of their team they support. They're able to have a very balanced and nuanced view of football. So a lot of these foot pun uh, journalists are getting their nose out of place because um, a lot of the football fans are, would put, much prefer to see someone that looks like them, sounds like them, supports the club that they support, speak about the things that they care about, as opposed to a journalist or a pundit who has their own agenda, right? Or an agenda that they're not being, um, they're not being um, outwardly with. They're not, they're not kind of, it's like even in sports, in football punditry for the most part, most of those guys don't even say the team they support. Right, they don't even mention it. It's really weird undercurrent of like, you know, they they kind of like always have a good thing to say about Liverpool, but unless you dig in deep and go to Wikipedia, you will have to you won't realize. Oh, actually, that's why because he played in for Liverpool for twenty five years, but they don't in, they don't um say it out loud that I support Liverpool or my son plays for Everton. That's why I'm not having a bad word to say about Everton. They don't even say it. So most fans will prefer going in that direction. So there's been a bit of a a weird. There's a bit of weird conflict between the journalists and between football fan channels because the journalists feel as if like the fan channels are taking away their eyes and, and ears from their columns or from their speeches on or their kind of clips on podcasts and stuff or whatever. And it feels as if the same kind of thing is happening within the kind of quote unquote beauty positivity body positivity kind of space or in that kind of influence space. Because a lot of those, especially if you're Jamila Jamil, if you're a good looking girl and you have a brain, and you can speak very well, you know, she's very articulate, she puts her point across very well, even though I, I don't agree with parts of it, you can get, you're, 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 you're well within your rights to feel annoyed that these young girls would much prefer to listen or to look at Kim, Kylie, Kendall, Chloe, Courtney than you. It makes sense, right? It's only natural, but I think there has to be an admittance, you have to admit that that's a reason why you're upset. You can't say it's because you think they're sick agents to the patriarchy, because it doesn't make any sense because it's, it's as if you're saying girls are not allowed there's not an, a, a portion of girls out there who are not allowed to be vain because it's it's, it's it's as if they're saying that this whole vanity and being obsessed with materialism and being obsessed with um, the way you look and how you feel and your body and your weight is something new Pe women and men are all around the world have been obsessed with how they look from from the age of probably Hollywood. It's just been one of those kind of fixtures of life. It's, it can be a bit unfortunate. Some people can feel as if it's not a good thing. But I think as society, if you're worried about young girls, go and speak to those young girls. If you're worried about young girls, go and speak to their young girls' parents. Because I think sometimes, again, there is an over-reliance, an over-dependency, right, on making sure celebrities know what to say or how what how much power they have with young kids i think the responsibility lies squarely within the parents within the guardians within the supporters around them not with the people they see on tv 
if your kid is getting influenced or is thinks that they should have plastic surgery because of Kendall or Kylie, then that's your problem as a parent or as a guardian. You, you're the one that fucked up, right? That's your issue. It's not their issue. They should be allowed to get as much work as they want to get done on their bodies. They should be allowed to promote as many flat tummy tea lollipops as they want, right? But what they should be able to do is that they should be able to have a support system around them where if they were to ask, oh, Auntie Jamila, do you think this flat tummy tea thing is a good idea? You should be able to then tell them maybe, um, um, what do you call it, in terms of a long-term goal of maintaining weight loss or to be healthy in life, maybe sucking on a lollipop that's going to suppress your appetite so you only eat a salad a day isn't a good idea. That should be your place as a guardian or as a member of the family to kind of step in but it shouldn't be a case of like deplatforming the kardashians because that because that's again so i'm saying like what do you want do you want to take away their show do you want to delete them from social media i don't believe that either i think everyone should be allowed the platform no matter what garbage you're spewing out there you should be allowed to put you should be allowed to put your shit out within a public square and us as citizens of civilians should be able to look at it. The ones that want to join you should be able to jump on your soapbox. box. The ones that don't want to join you should be able to throw tomatoes at you. That's how it should work. But you shouldn't be, we shouldn't get to the point where we're deep platforming people and saying that Kardashians can't have something to say because there's always going to be girls out there who think looking good or feeling good about your body is the main goal in life, right? They, everything they do is centered around making sure they feel and look good. There's so many YouTube videos I, I've seen on there of like, um, uh, female vloggers who do the whole like uh, Sunday self care day, right? Where they kind of go through their kind of whole day of how they kind of put themselves together, um, what they do in terms of meditation practices, in terms of like green juice and all that sort of stuff, walks, reading, blah, 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 blah. There is a kind of movement towards that, that kind of like self care. Then there is also an, an, a kind of offshoot of that where they're obsessed with making sure that they're in shape or getting surgery or whatever it may be. I just think they should be allowed to do it. I, I just don't know why you care. Like if you're Jamila Jamil and you're like, you've obviously an educated person, you know what you're talking about. Why would you care about what these girls are doing? In that, the girls that are obsessed with Kim Kardashian or the Kardashian clan are always going to be obsessed with that. Someone else will replace, when, whenever, they, whenever they run ends, someone else will, will replace them and it'll just continue again. But there's also going to be a group of girls out there who are going to be open to hearing other bits of information. And I don't think you should be putting yourself in a position where you're tearing down one woman in order to kind of raise up yourself or to raise up what you think is ideal. I think what you should be doing is maybe openly criticizing them, maybe saying what they're doing isn't healthy, um, but not tearing them down, saying that they have body or facial dysmorphia. You don't know them. That's not a nice thing to say. What, what makes you think they have body? Because someone cares about what they look. It's a weird thing, isn't it? I mean, again, maybe it's, a, maybe it's kind of a British thing. I don't know if it's a British thing or US thing, but there is a... There is a thing, I know, especially even since I'm with boys, there is a thing where if you hang out with a group of boys and you go out and you're really dressed up, like you went really crazy, you do get sometimes taken a piss out by your friends. Like you're trying too hard, right? There's a weird, I don't know if it's a British thing where like people don't like when you try hard, when you like give a shit about what you look like. Maybe it's the fact that, you know, it's a little bit um, self-indulgent. Um, it, it looks like you're selfish. It looks like you're self-centered because, you know, you care about the self. But if you care about yourself and you care about your house, you care about your room, you want to keep yourself tidy, that doesn't mean you don't care about people. It just means you're aware that sometimes the way you dress and the way that your space is arranged around you can sometimes reflect your inner internal monologue, right? Sometimes when you're, there's a lot of, it's like the whole Jordan Peterson clean up your bedroom thing. When, you, when you're sometimes in chaos, you can sometimes reflect that in the way you're dressed, right? Your beard's disheveled, you've got some shit you're wearing for three days in a row. It's not a bad idea to take care of yourself or to make sure you feel good in order to somehow trick yourself to make sure you feel good. It, it, I don't know. All these little things are okay to do. And even if it's not even that deep, even if it's just a, a, an idea of just like, I just want to look good. I don't care what you think. That should be allowed as well. I don't know. Again, I, I, don't, I just don't understand how this is constructive in any sort of way. I don't think it's because of by, you know, saying that they need to like, how much money do they need? Like, who are you to say that's none of your business? Oh, body or facial dysmorphia. It's a bit shocking. And again, that this Jamila Jamil, for the most part, in my eyes, again, because I don't watch TV, but she's made her name in my eyes because she's tearing down the Kardashians. And I'm again, I'm not a fan. This is the weird thing. I'm not even a fan of theirs, right? But I just don't understand. I just, and I've never watched a show of theirs in my life. Every time the brunette plays in the background and I, and I hear their drony, mundane voice talking about the most um, asinine thing in the world, I just want to like shoot myself in the face, right? Because I don't get how that's popular. But it is. 
and, I, and I'm not going to be the person that's going to like stop her fun and be like, oh, turn that shit off. I'm just going to go into the next room. Or I'm going to play my thing on my headphones. That's what everyone should do. Like, if you don't like something, just go about your life and like what you like. But there's no point telling people not to like what they like. It, I don't, I've never understood that way of thinking. Like with X Factor or Big Brother, all these things that people love to watch Love Island, which I don't watch right i don't care for i don't i'm not gonna stop you from watching by saying do not watch this show this show is crazy one show you shouldn't watch on fucking love like what it's fucking nuts like i, I don't get it i just don't get it it's really really strange um way of going about things um again i don't understand it i think she's obviously got a lot of great things to say i think they might her intentions might be pure in some respects you know maybe the fact that she's attractive and she's been given a lot of opportunities based on her looks has sometimes and maybe made her a bit embittered or a little bit cynical because she feels as if like people should be given a platform to speak because she's obviously a very intelligent and well-spoken person but also like the only reason why i know you is because you're talking about the Kardashians. that's a bit you know what i mean that's where it gets a bit a bit ropey for me in, in my regard like and and again who am i to say anything i don't know what's going on that but i just think some girls should be allowed girls should be allowed to enjoy um watching the Kardashians talk dronely about their family or obsess about a new handbag or new shoe if they want to right the show's what 15 seasons in or something like that right the collections i don't even want to check let's say it's more than 10 seasons in like it's not gonna stop guys like relax just take your foot off the like it's cut ribbing the collections kind of feels like talking about trump it's so tr it's so like it's low-hanging fruit it's like okay we get it like everyone thinks he's an idiot all right bad president all right not presidential enough cool like move on like move on move on but i think there's a there is a group of people maybe jamila jamil involved may, included who want to who want to be the person to always speak about these kind of things so when they're down so when the takedown happens when they get quote-unquote deplatformed or cancelled in some respects they can sometimes they can maybe take front and center right and then be the person to replace them that sometimes i think that's so that's why it comes to virtual signaling comes of it right because everyone everyone's kind of sniping at trump and they're not st and they kind of not stopping because you know it's easy click so if you talk about a connection like for instance i'm speaking about what jimmy jimmy was talking about now it's got three point uh, something then 3.10 plus views right million views so there is this idea that you know sometimes it can be a good trojan horse right if you're an educated cultured person to kind of speak about real big pop culture icons and then to somehow segue or somehow you know bringing your kind of ideology or message in within that right it's a good trojan horse method to do but i think i don't think it's necessary i think there there, there is there needs to be a return to minding your own business and also be it needs to be a return to if you don't like something just ignore it like this is the free market we live in, an, in a society where if you make a t-shirt and no one likes it no one will buy it if you make a restaurant and no one likes it no one will come in like this is the free society we live in you don't need to um stand outside with placards and protest and say shut this restaurant down and shit their wings are not good they make rubbish burgers eventually no one will go i mean just stop going i don't i don't i don't get this whole movement behind i don't like something so i'm going to tell everyone not to like it as well it's very very bizarre but anyway i guess